Chapter 45 In the opinion of Beelzebub, man's extraction of electricity from nature and its destruction during its use is one of the chief causes of the shortening of the life of man. After Beelzebub had listened to the contents of the Lita Chambrus and had put it by the side of the Sinoa near him, that is, something similar to our etage, he again deeply sighed and continued to speak as follows. It would be only half a calamity for our common megacosmos if the abnormalities of the ordinary existence of the free brain beings of this planet of yours had all kinds of bad consequences only for themselves, that is, for the free brain beings which they are, and also for the possibilities of completely perfecting themselves with those higher bodies which have already had the extreme misfortune to arise within them or which will arise within them in the future. But now the whole terror lies in this, that their abnormal existence already begins to have a repercussion and a harmful influence on the normal existence of the free brain beings who breed on quite different planets, though, it is true, belonging to the same solar system, and also have a harmful influence on the possibilities of the normal self-perfecting of their higher being parts, coated in their common presences. I happen to learn about this distressing fact of common cosmic character only just before my departure forever from that solar system oars. The most interesting information for you of all the events which have given cause for a clear, constating and completed crystallising in my common presence of the imperishable being data for the indubitable conviction of precisely such a common cosmic distressing fact might be the information that in this I was greatly helped by none other than the result, or as your favourites would say, the son, of my essence friend, Gunho Haha, the young conscious individual, Gunho Rako, who also, like his producer, devoted the whole of his existence to the study of all the details of the properties of the cosmic omnipresence Okidanok, and also, little by little, became worthy of being considered one of the, what are called, higher degree, common cosmic learned free-brained beings. Do you know, my boy, in consequence of the fact that all the events and conversations which served as the cause of the gradual elucidation and crystallization in me of the data for the indubitable conviction of such a common cosmic distressing fact are in general very interesting and might be for you very instructive and, as only the reflections of the sphere of our dear Caritas are meanwhile visible, I will tell you also about this in somewhat greater detail. In order to give you a fuller representation about why in my being the data has been crystallized for the constating and thorough cognizing of this, I shall tell you, in its order, about what proceeded and shall begin from the moment when, while still on this planet of yours, I first heard about my full pardon. As soon as I heard about this special, most glorious act of grace towards me, I, of course, decided at that very moment to return at the very opportunity to the dear essence place of my arising. And for this it was necessary for me, first of all, to ascend to the planet Mars in order thoroughly to prepare for such a long journey. Several days after having left your planet forever, I, as always, returned on our same occasion to the planet Mars. Arriving there on the planet Mars, we soon received a command from above that I and all other beings of our tribe who wished to return to the place of their arising should assemble on the planet Saturn, using the ship occasion, on which the planet, that large intersystem ship, omnipresence, would land which would bring us all to our destination. I nevertheless had to exist on the planet Mars for a certain time in order to liquidate all my personal affairs there and to give various orders concerning the beings of our tribe, and it was just at this time that I was told that the Tufneftuf there very much wished to see me. Tufneftef on the planet Mars is the name given to the being who is the head of all the free brain beings breeding on this planet and he, like that being who in the same position on your planet is called King. I knew this Tuf Nef Tuf, or King in his youth, when he was only a Pluf Puf Nuf, and a Pluf Puf Nuf 
is almost the same as our Sir Lichnius, or on your planet Earth, positions. A progress, I must also tell you that on almost all the planets of our great universe, and likewise on the other planets of this solar system also, a being becomes the head of beings by merit, just from among these former Plepufnovs of physicians. My first meeting with the Martian took place when we first arrived in this solar system and settled on this planet Mars. He was then a Plepufnov, just on that part of the surface of this planet where I and all who came with me had the place of our residence. Since then, existing on various parts of the surface of the planet Mars, in the capacity of Plefpufnuf, he merited becoming the head over all the beings breeding on the planet Mars. And when he neared the state of the sacred Ishmech, he desired to return to just that part of the surface of his planet where he had spent his youth. That is why this former Plefpufnuf, now Tufnefteth, happened at that time to be near the place of my residence on Mars. This Martian, Tufnefteth, was, according to the notions of your favourites, already an extremely old being. He was, by the time calculation of the planet Mars, about 12,000 Martian years old, which is only a little less than the time calculation of the Earth. Here you must be told that on the planet Mars, the duration of the existence of beings in general is almost the same as that of the three centred beings of all the other planets of our megacosmos, excepting, of course, those beings who are directly formed from the first tetartocosmoses and whose duration of existence may be three times as long. The free brain beings arising and existing on the planet Mars, as well as the free centred beings of all those planets of our megacosmos, on which an existence, though normal for free centred beings, proceeds, also have full possibility of reaching the state of the sacred Ishmech, namely, that being when the existence of a being already becomes a dependent, as regards the most great cosmic Iran Iran Umange, only on those substance which arise directly from the manifestations of the most most holy prime source itself, and not as it proceeds in the other beings whose existence depends on cosmic substances arising through the results of all corresponding gravity center concentrations of the common cosmic fundamental Anzan Bala Uzi Aza. And when they reach this state of the sacred Ichmech, and the reason of their highest part is already perfected up to the required gradation of the sacred measure of reason, then, in the first place, the process of the sacred Raskunano may also proceed with them, but only by their own wish, and secondly, their highest being body is taken directly to the holy planet Purgatory. And so, when I return to the planet Mars from the planet Earth, and while I was hardly finishing the liquidation of my affairs there, I was informed that the Tufnefteth of the planet wished to see me personally. This request of the Honourable Tufnefteth was translated to me through our Ahun by means of what is there called a Keli U Ufu. The text of this Keli U Ufu was as follows I have heard that you, your right reverence, have become worthy of receiving from our common Father Creator full pardon for the transgressions of your youth and that you are now leaving my native land forever. And therefore I, an old being, very much wish to see you and to bless you personally for the last time and at the same time to thank you for your person, all the beings of your tribe, for their constant good relations with the beings of my native land during so many years. At the end of this Kelly E. Ufu, was the postscript. I personally will present myself at your house, but as you know, the size of my planetary body does not permit me in any way to do so, and hence I am compelled to beg you not to refuse to come to my foul fee foof. I must say that the free brain being of the planet Mars knew our genuine nature from the very beginning, and also the true reason why we were compelled to dwell on their planet. They were not like the free brain beings of your planet, who never knew anything and never even suspected who we were and why we existed on their planet. And so, my boy, when I received the said invitation from the Honourable Tufnefteth, I, of course, immediately decided to go to him without delay. And when I arrived there, this, in the full sense of the word, great Tufnefteth, after all the prescribed ceremonies and exchange of courtesies, turned to me as we were talking with his request, 
which was just the cause for the subsequent crystallization in me of corresponding data for the indutable conviction that the results ensuing from the abnormal existence of the free brain beings of your planet had already began to act harmfully also on the ordinary existence of the free brain beings arising and existing on the planet Mars in respect of their potency to perfect themselves as is proper to all free brain beings. I shall try to give you in our speech the contents of this request of the great Tufneftep almost literally. He then said as follows, Your right reverence, thanks to the most gracious pardon granted to you from above, you have again acquired the right freely to actualize your justly merited wishes. And thanks to this all-embracing grace, you have again all the possibilities of becoming what you might long ago have been, owing to your formerly acquired merits as regards reason. And of course, from now on, you, your right reverence, will undoubtedly meet various individuals corresponding to your reason, who have already reached the higher gradations of reason. And so, I take the liberty of applying to you, as my old friend, with the request which consists in this, that on meeting these individuals you should remember about me, an old being, and not forget to ask their opinion about that fact which, during recent years, has almost all the time been a shock for the arising of disturbing associations in all my spiritualized parts, and that when you will have learned their opinion, not to refuse to communicate it to me somehow or other at a suitable occasion. And he continued further. The point is that during the last few for two foos, I constated very definitely that, among the beings of our planet, the Norfu Fatwa increases each for two foo, and parallel with this, I observed in them a proportional diminishing of the intensity of their potency for the possibility of active mentation. When I first discovered this fact, so deplorable for the beings of our planet, and began from then on intensively to ponder and to seek the cause of it, in order to be able to give corresponding indications to those beings who have entrusted themselves to me to help them in their struggle to uproot this lamentable factor that has newly arisen in their common presences. Then in spite of the fact that I meditated very often and long on this question which constantly agitates me, I have up till now not been able even approximately to elucidate for myself where the trouble lies and what corresponding measures must be taken to destroy this evil. Thus ended the request of the Honourable Tuf Nathath of the planet Mars, and I, my boy, of course, there and then promised this oldest friend of mine to inquire about all this, and at my first meeting with a corresponding individual, to communicate the reply to him without foul. Several Martian days after the interview of which I have told you, we left this hospitable planet forever and ascended to the planet Saturn. No sooner had we arrived on the planet Saturn than the chief of our tribe there at once came and announced to us the contents of the epiogram he had just received, in which it was stated that the big intersystem ship Omnipresence would land on the planet Saturn only early in the Hiraharaha. Hiraharaha means that one of these periods of time determined by a certain position occupied by this planet in relation on the one hand to the sun of its system, and on the other to another planet of this same system called Neptune. There are in one year seven of these definitely established periods there on the planet Saturn, and each of them has its own name. As by the time calculations of the planet Mars, there yet remain to this Hiraharaha almost half a foos, or by the time calculation of your favourites, about one and a half months. We decided to organise our ordinary being existence there during this waiting in a more or less suitable manner. One part of our beings remained on the ship occasion itself. Another found accommodation in the places offered us by the amiable beings of the planet Saturn, and I with Ahun went to Rhea, that is, to just that large populated centre of beings, there where my friend Gornahor Harhak existed. In the evening of our arrival there, I, by the way, asked this essence friend of mine, during friendly conversation, how the existence of his heir proceeded, that is, my dear, Kesjian result outside of me, or as your favourites would say, my godson, Gornahor Rakok. He thanked me and said that Rakok existed quite well, that he had already become his heir in all respects. 
and that he had made the aim of his existence also the study of the details of the omnipresent substance, Okidanok, which had previously been for himself also the aim of all his reasonable existence. After having paused a little, he added that in respect of the knowledge attained of the question of the cosmic substance Okidanok, his air had already, as he expressed himself, smelled out its very essence. He said further that owing to the results of the scientific attainments of his air, all the data for every conviction that had been previously crystallised in his essence, thanks to persevering labours during long years, had by that time not only been totally decrystallised, but that he had even entirely destroyed all his inventions relating to the investigations of this omnipresent cosmic substance, among which was also his famous non-radiating lamp, and sighing deeply, he ended by saying, I am now in full agreement with the opinion of the result of my all, that it was the greatest misfortune for me to have been occupied so long with this, in the objective sense absolutely unredeemable sin. Talking further on various incidental topics, we began in accordance with the flowing of associations of being mentation, to talk also of the free brain beings breeding on the planet Earth. You remember, I have already told you that my friend Gunahor Harhak was always kept informed of my observations on their strange psyche, which I sent to him as well as to your uncle, to Alan, even with the duplicates of certain of my notes. So, as we were talking of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy, Gunahor Harhak happened by the way to ask me, Tell me, please, my friend, is it possible that the general duration of existence of these unfortunates still continues to diminish? When I began to explain to him the state of affairs there at the present time on this question, and the new data I had elicited concerning that abnormality there, just at that moment the result of Gornhor Harhok, Gornhor Rakok, himself entered the room where we were. Though the newcomer had exactly the same exterior as his producer, he had the appearance of being very virile and full of fiery youth. When he had taken his place on his perch, as is proper to the free brain beings of that planet, he began, as is usual to them, to welcome me in an angelically musical voice, with kind and self-satisfying wishes of being feeling. And in conclusion, he said with a certain pathos, Although you are only my Kestrian father, yet in view of the fact that during my here here you assuredly fulfilled with the feeling of full and thorough cognizance the divine obligations taken upon yourself in respect of me, there have been crystallised in my common presence in respect of your data, equivalent to those which should be in the common presence of each free brain being in respect of his own producer. And it is, without doubt, just because of this that I very often remember you, and each time in my thoughts I wish for you such ensuring circumstances at all times, as you can lead in general to, in the objective sense, a good and happy future. You, probably, my boy, did not understand what I meant when I told you that Gornahor Rakok took his place on his perch. The point is that the free brain beings of this planet, according to their outer coating, gradually acquired the habit of resting only in that posture, when, after having stooped in a special way, they let the whole weight of their planetary body rest on their lower extremities, and for these means of resting it gradually became necessary for them to be at a certain height. Hence it is that the free brain beings there have established the practice of fixing, at a certain height, in the rooms where they exist, special sticks for resting, which they call perches. I may as well say also that these perches of theirs are usually embellished with various knick-knacks or carved with all kinds of figures, just as is done by your favourites also, when they manifest the same weakness in regard to what they call their furniture. And so, after having taken his place at his perch, and expressed his welcome, my dear Kestinian result outside of me, or my grandson, Gornahor Rakok, began to take part in my conversation with Gornahor Harhak. And so, my boy, when during our general conversations on various topics, I, by the way, became interested to learn from my godson what was the reason which led to the crystallising in his presence of data for the engendering of the impulse to interest himself seriously in the sphere of the elucidating of the details of the omnipresent cosmic substance Okidanok, thanks to which he also, like his producer, had become worthy to make certain great cosmic discoveries, 
Then, after young Rackhawks reply with explanatory details to this question of mine, the fact became clear to me that the abnormal existence of your favourites already began to act harmfully on the normal existence and on the conscious self-affecting of beings breeding on the planet Mars. And, at the same time, thanks to this detailed reply of his, which was based on scientific foundations, I drew also data for the elucidating of that question, for the solution of which my old Martian friend, the great Tuf-Neftef, had applied to me with his request. I will try, my boy, to reproduce to you in our speech all the faults of this reply of his, also as exactly as possible. After having thought a little at the question which I had put to him, Gornahor Rakok replied with deep seriousness. At the beginning of my existence, namely at the age when I was still preparing to be a responsible being, I, as is proper to all free brain beings at that age, devoted the greater part of my time to practising for the potency to deliberate actively and long, and of itself it so happened that during the interval of time for necessary rest, I used to be occupied with the various experimental apparatuses of my producer. And it was just then at that period of my existence that I began to notice more than once that on certain days the forces and degree of my active mentation grew particularly worse. What I thus constated aroused in me a subjective interest which served as the source for the engendering in my presence of the requisite impulse for the thorough cognizance of the cause of this fact. And from then on I began to pay attention both to myself as well as to what proceeded around me and to seek out the causes for it. And after one reiki I became convinced beyond doubt that this undesirable state proceeded with me each time on the day when our large life chacken was in action. It was just this fact which I then first constated, which was the cause that I have since then become seriously interested in this omnipresent cosmic substance and deeply absorbed in the study of its details. As a result, from the very beginning of my subsequent experimental elucidations, I came to possess an immeasurable number of every kind of proof for the elucidation both for myself and for others of the fact that the omnipresent substance Okidarnok is such a principle of the common presence of the atmosphere of our planet and evidently of the presence of the atmosphere of other planets as takes part both in the unrising of every planetary and surplanetary formation among which, of course, there is also the Hapricipicronian part of every being, as well as in the maintenance of their existence. Upon my further experimental elucidations, I also became aware, beyond doubt, that although our solar system, like all the other solar systems of the great universe, has its own Azam Balu El Aza, and each planet with its atmosphere is a special place of concentration of one or another class of cosmic substances of the given systematic Azambala Uaza. Yet, nevertheless, the cosmic substance Okidanok is an indispensable and predominant part of the presence of each planet. And later, also thanks to my experiments, it became clear to me that this cosmic substance is, owing to the common universal equilibrium, concentrated in every system in a strictly corresponding proportion and is distributed also in a strictly definite proportion between the atmospheres of each planet of the given solar system and that when this universal substance is used up by accident or design in any one place of atmospheric space it must without fail be replenished for the equilibrium of its common proportionalness in the atmosphere and this proceeds by its flowing in from other places and thereby this balancing transposition of Ophigarnok must proceed not only from one space to another in the atmosphere of any planet, but also from the atmosphere of one planet to the atmosphere of another planet. If in this other planet, for some reason or other, more than its established norm is used up, finally I still further very definitely and from every aspect made clear to my reason and prove to others that the omnipresent cosmic substance Ophigarnok present in our atmosphere and which is constantly being replenished is for the common presence of our planet not only necessary and most important for every kind of arising and maintaining of existence but also that the essence of every relative independent intraplanetary and surplanetary formation 
as well as of the beings of every system of brains, an external coating depends on this substance. And likewise, that the possibilities for free brain beings to perfect themselves and ultimately to blend with the prime cause of everything existing depend exclusively also on it. I repeat, as a result of all my experimental elucidations, I very definitely cognised for myself and acquired indutable data for the possibilities of proving from every aspect to all those around me, beings like myself, that the destruction in the presences of the planet and of its atmosphere of the omnipresent cosmic substance, Okidanok, is almost equivalent to the conscious destruction of all the labours and results of the five sacred calls of everything that exists. With these words, captivated by the theme of this exposition, my dear godson, the young, high-spirited Gornahor Rakulk finished his talk. In the middle of Gornahor Rakulk's explanations concerning the mentioned properties of the omnipresent cosmic substance Okidanok and the inevitable consequences of its extraction, and destruction from the common presence of your planet. The suspicion arose in me, and in my memory there gradually began to be restored all kinds of general pictures, previously perceived during my personal surge on among your favourites, just during the period of my close observations on their existence from the planet Mars, of the impressions from their ordinary being existence, of how they at different periods repeatedly obtained this substance or its separate parts from the nature of their planet, and use them for their different naively egoistic aims. And when, during the further explanations of Gornhor Rakulk, I, by association, remembered the request of the great Tufnefteth of the planet Mars, I then with all my being became aware without any doubt of all the maleficent consequences of just this manifestation of the free brain beings of your planet. They named the totality, or the separate parts of this substance, sacred just for them, Differently at different periods, and at the present time they name the result of the blending and the mutual destruction of two parts of this omnipresent substance, electricity. And indeed, although there they had already several times in earlier epochs found out, of course thanks always to accidentally successive circumstances, how to extract by various means from the nature of their planet, and to use for every kind of their, as I already said, naively egoistic aims, Various parts of this omnipresent substance, absolutely necessary for normal cosmic processes, yet never have they destroyed so much of it as in recent times. So in this way, thanks to the explanations of my Kesjian result outside of me, in the first place it became indutably clear to me concerning the maleficent action already begun of the results of the ordinary, abnormal being existence of the free brain beings who have taken your fancy, and secondly, the disturbing question of my old friend was solved of itself, namely why, during recent times, it had become more and more difficult for the free brain beings of the planet Mars to perfect themselves. As regards the solution in this manner of this question, I might say that it was obtained, just as is said about similar cases, in one rarely used saying of our esteemed Mullah Nasir Adin who formulated it in the following words. One can never know who might help you to get out of galoshes. And the solution of this question was thus obtained, because my very old friend had in view individuals with quite other data and possibilities than those Saturn friends of mine possessed, who were only ordinary free brain beings. My friend probably did not suspect that in most cases concerning these questions, just these ordinary free brain beings who inquire information about every kind of genuine cosmic fact exclusively only thanks to their being part dull duty are more competent than any of the angels or cherubim with their prepared being who, though perfected in reason to high gradations, yet as regards practical confrontation may appear to be only such individuals as our always respected Mullah Nassim Adin defines in the following words. Never will he understand the sufferings of another who has not experienced them himself, though he may have divine reason and the nature of a genuine devil. At this point of Beelzebub's towers, there were diffused all along the intersystem ship Karnak, artificially produced vibrations, which had the property of penetrating into the common presences of all the passengers of the ship 
and which acted on what are called the wandering nerves of the stomach. This artificially produced manifestation was an announcement to the passengers about their assembling in the common what is called Damji Trona Artra, a kind of terrestrial monastical refectory in which the second being food is collectively taken.